Nous allons maintenant écouter Félix Finkbeiner, qui nous vient d'Allemagne. En 2007, âgé de 9 ans et inspiré de Vangari Matai, Félix a terminé un exposé devant sa classe de quatrième année d'école par ces mots. Je le cite, « Et si on plantait un million d'arbres dans chacun des pays de la terre ?» Fin de la citation. Aujourd'hui, plus de 100 000 enfants de 91 pays ont planté des millions d'arbres et lancé l'initiative d'enfants « Plantons pour la planète ». Félix est accompagné par Minami, une japonaise, Nathaniel, un britannique, Alessa, une hollandaise et Alexander, un américain. Alors, Félix, la parole est à vous. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, fellow children and youth, we children want to talk about forests, monkeys, and mosquitoes. Thank you for giving us children the chance um, to speak here, and thank you for making this year the International Year of Forest. Because for us children, forests are not only the livelihood of billions, but for us children, forests are our future. If we children think about future, then we think about two main crises. The poverty crisis, with 30,000 children dying of starvation every single day. 30,000 children in an, are dying in an incredible rich world. And the climate crisis, with one part of the world, the rich part, a small minority, exhausting the most, and the ones that already suffer, will suffer even more in future. We children understand that the adults know about everything about these crises. But we children don't understand why there's so little action. We know that adults know exactly what um, challenges we have. And they know the solutions to these challenges. But we don't understand why there's so little action. During many um, discussions, physical and virtual, we children often discussed why there's so little action. And we ended with three possible reasons for this. The first reason might be the perception of future. For most adults, future seems to mean 20, 30, or even 40 years. But for us children, 2,100 is still in our lifetime. And for most adults, or for adults, it's an academic question. If the sea level will rise by one, two, or three centimeters, or seven meters until, two, until the end of this century. But for many of us children, it's a question of survival. Another reason why there's so little action on the sides of the adults might be that many adults seem to hide behind the climate skeptics, the ones that say there is no climate crisis. We children also often discussed about that topic. But for all these people, we have an answer. If we follow the scientists that tell us there is a crisis, and if we act, and in 20 years we find out they, uh, they were wrong, then we didn't do any mistake. But if we follow the skeptics and don't do anything, and in 20 years we find out that they were wrong, it will be too late to save our future. My friend once told me a third possible reason, a third way to explain the, um, the behavior of the adults. If you let a monkey choose, if he wants one banana now or six bananas later, The monkey always chooses the one banana now. From this analysis, 
We children understood we cannot trust that adults alone will save our future. We have to take our future in our own hands. To do that, we children often made consultations. We often discussed what we have to do. And in our most recent consultation, we asked ourselves, what would we do if we were the heads of government? And we ended with a very simple three-point plan. The first point is carbon to the museum, which um, means that we have to go down to zero emissions until 2050. And the great thing about this is that all the technology we need for zero emissions already exists. Our second point is that um, is we need to bring poverty the, to the museum through climate justice. We have to accept that if we don't want to go over the another two degrees limit, then we have a limited budget of CO2 we can exhaust that we have to accept. This budget we can, of CO2 we can still emit is 600 billion tons. So 600 billion tons divided through the next 40 years and the world's popu population, which will soon be 10 billion people, is one and a half tons per person per year. And who wants more pays more to the ones that exhaust less. And the third point we children found is trees, trees and forests. We have to protect the uh, forests, the already existing forests. We have to keep the rainforest from disappearing. And in addition, we have to plant trees. It is now more than four years ago that we children started the Plant for the Planet Children initiative, planting one million trees in each country of the world. It is also more than four years ago that Vangari Matai started the Billion Tree campaign. It is now time that we work together. We combine our forces, old and young, rich and poor, and together we can plant a trillion trees. We can start a trillion tree campaign. Um, we children think that we can manage to plant a trillion trees in 10 years. The Americans made it to the moon in 10 years. The Chinese planted 2.7 billion trees in 2009. And to be honest, a trillion trees is only 150 trees per person. So we can manage. To conclude, we children have a campaign, Stop Talking, Start Planting. With this campaign, it's a very powerful campaign to uh, spread the message to all people of the world. This is our campaign. <laughs> we can use this campaign together. And to end, I want to give a message to all children of the world. We children are the majority of, on this world. On this world, we can make a difference. And never forget, one mosquito cannot do anything against a rhino, but a thousand mosquitoes can make a rhino change its direction. Felix and your comrades, I'm sure all the adults in this hall 
will take up your message because we want all to be among yours in the future as well. Thank you. Pour terminer le programme de ce matin, il nous reste encore trois extraits de films à voir. Le premier est tiré d'un 